On my mark, close your eyes. Let's be heroes. Sure. Are you my new best friend? Hello, and welcome to the first edition of Sean Kelly on Movies Presents Lost Interviews. In this series of podcasts, I will post the audio of interviews I conducted in the past, but never ended up posting for one reason or another. So, um, uh, First up is my interview from November 2014 at the Blood in the Snow Film Festival, where I interviewed... Justin DeClue, who directed the film Teddy Bomb. Now, Teddy Bomb was actually one of my favorites of the Blood and Snow Film Festival that year, and it was a very enjoyable interview. However, I never had a chance to post the interview because the film never quite surfaced again, so I thought I'd just post it here for your listening enjoyment. Please be aware that the interview will likely include some spoilers for Teddy Bomb, and I will be back at the end for a outro. Okay, so um, how did the idea for um, Teddy Bomb come about? Um, it really came out of, like, uh, desperation, because we had another movie we were supposed to make, and the money completely fell through. So what ended up happening was the day that the guy who told me, like, we can't get any money came to my apartment, I was kind of, I kind of had to decide, okay, we're going to make another movie. And we just started talking. We just started, like, what, what should the movie be about? Okay, well, maybe we can have a chase movie. Someone is being chased by someone else. Why is he being chased? And we were trying to think of reasons he could be chased. And he's, and we were going, like, uh, maybe he could have the cure for cancer? No, that's too dark. We don't want to do that. We can't do it. Um, how about he's being chased because he has a bomb? Like, an, a talking bomb. And my friend, Christian Murdoch, who I was having this conversation with... Um, who's the star of the film, yeah. uh, was like, no, that's a dumb idea. Let's not do a talking bomb. And, and I went, yeah, you know what? You're right. It is a dumb idea. I need to go to the bathroom. I went to the bathroom and left, and I'm like, no, we're doing the talking bomb idea. <laughs> and that's pretty much where it came from, is that we just wanted to do something really that we could shoot fast and quick and we didn't need that many resources for, and that would be fun and have a lot going on. <laughs> and that's pretty much how Teddy Bomb came about. Okay. So, personally, how much was the film made for uh, there's no, like, really exact number that I could give you. Pretty much take whatever you think, looking at the movie, if it was made for it, divide it by four. <laughs> That's pretty much how much it cost. Um, I was uh, full-time in university at the time, yeah. in the second year. Everyone on the film had, like, either full-time jobs or were working full-time. So it was really whatever we had in our pockets and trying to figure it out as it goes along. The dollar store was a very good resource. <laughs> Okay, so that's the same thing. Was there more than one teddy bear used? Yes, there was. Um, the way we went about it is, when we found out that we wanted to have a movie about a talking bomb, we didn't know what it was going to look like, so we actually went to, like, Chinatown, and we went to uh, a bunch of, like, used places looking for uh, something we could use. And when I went to the dollar store, they had all this basket of bears. And I'm like, hey, we can use the bears! And we bought, like, ten bears to use in the movie. And they would kind of get destroyed because they're dollar store bears. They're not made to, you know, be use, but yeah, we have a bunch of them that uh, that we use when we use the movie, and they all have like different faces. Yeah. Some would have smooshed in faces, some would have like eyes that were too big. It was, <laughs> they all look pretty different. Well, just, I just noticed that at one point the bear gets soaked in blood. So. <laughs> oh yeah, um, something interesting. We did have like a blood bear because yeah. if we had one, I think the problem would have been like um, what will happen if like he gets soaked in blood and we can't shoot any other scenes. But what we found is, and I learned this trick. So any people who want to make gore films. If you have something that's covered in blood and run it under cold water, all the blood will go out of it. As long as you use, like, caro syrup and food coloring, yeah. so. Uh, okay, so what was your, your influences on the film? Um, so basically, uh, the way that I approached the movie was that if I was 14 years old, what movie would I want to see? So my influences are, like, um, you know, Peter Jackson, Sam Raimi, um, just like any energetic filmmakers, mm-hmm. Edgar Wright, um, George Romero, because there's a little bit of zombie stuff in it. It's because we had not very much money, and by that no money, we I had to make like the most exciting movie I could with the camera and the actors that I had. 
Well, I'll just I, I kind of <laughs> noticed that thing. Teddy bear who's a bomb is like the least outrageous thing about it. <laughs> yeah. um, we kind of made a decision that like the teddy bear. Um, what's funny is that on set I did the voice of the bear, and yeah. the way I did him was kind of like Hal 2000, like hey, like um, um, I'm trying to think of a line from Teddy Bond now. Um, um, he's like, uh, I'm a bomb. I was made to explode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like uh, I'm a bomb. I'm made to kill people, and I did it in this flat kind of tonal voice. Yeah. And what ended up happening was the guy who did the voice of the bomb, we did it in one night. He just read all the lines, and he hasn't even seen the movie yet. He doesn't even know what the movie's about. <laughs> I know, I know that the bear goes uncredited, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> that was inspired by, um, uh, you know, like Frankenstein, the original Frankenstein, J- uh, James Whale's Frankenstein. It said, the monster? Question mark. <laughs> um, I'm sure, like... Um, the person he's a filmmaker from Toronto so uh, I think he's probably going to come to the screening and, I mean, it'll get out eventually but I like to keep it like who knows what he directed a short in ABC's of Death 2 well actually I, yeah, you know who it is. I know who it is because because yeah. <laughs> um, I think Justin McConnell posted the oh yeah he did he did, and he, and he did said his name inside <laughs> yeah. of it yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not it's not really a secret like it's like if it it's not gonna bother me if uh, I thought that the actor didn't want to know, people to know but now he's like don't tell everyone that I'm in the movie that's my voice <laughs> uh, I think on the super vein um, Peter Kapowski is the villain yes <laughs> um, how did that come about oh just well, because well, because I know Peter, Peter yeah. I, 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 I can tell all the in-jokes involving his hat. Yeah, <laughs> um, uh, yeah it's just because uh, he always wears that hat, and we wrote the character to have that hat on the time, and he's always commenting on his hat, and he's insulted by someone uh, <laughs> mentioning insulting the hat. I, I kind of find it funny, but the hat turned out to be his weakness. Yeah, that, that was a thing at the last minute that we decided, where we were like, how can we, like destroy the villain at the end and like the hat that he wears the entire film that would be the perfect thing so how so did that come about oh the hat or Peter or Kaplowski Peter Kaplowski uh, I worked at the Bloor Cinema yeah. um, back before it was a hot dog cinema yeah. and because Peter worked there we kind of got to know each other mm-hmm. and um, he acted in a bunch of shorts that I made um, and we weren't super friends at the time but I was like Peter would be like perfect for this character which is like a Billy Zane demon knight kind of like crazy like calm but at the same time will kill you for no no reason and not feel any harm about it and uh, when we pitched it to him we were like you want to be in it and he was like yeah sure fine and he stuck by us the entire time of shooting and post and he was awesome Mm -hmm. I know he has a producer for this yeah he does Um, he, he he's a guy that like he's awesome like if you need him he'll be there and help you and like encourage you like during the editing and when we were dubbing Peter actually recorded in the rough cut all the bombs lines and so it was me and Pete kind of figured out like how to change the lines if they could go there so he has like a lot of credit to like fine tuning the bombs lines and in the rough cut version he does all the bomb and he does it like hello how is it going like he does it like a robot so it's, re- it's really interesting I uh, just well, simply, um, location-wise, I kind of noticed that you sh- shot by the old Westwood Cinema. Yes. I was quite familiar with as a kid because I went there a lot. Oh, really? <laughs> um, that was actually Peter K- uh, Kaplowski was like, um, there's a cinema I've always wanted to shoot at uh, <laughs> called the Westwood. And I was like, I was kind of nervous because it's a big scene in the movie that involves zombies and stuff like that and makeup effects. And I was nervous that, um, like, the police, there's a police station right across the street. Yeah. And I was afraid they were going to come and be like, you guys can't shoot here. Like, this is public property. We shot there for two days. Yeah. No one bothered us. <laughs> yeah, I, well, just, I remember, like, the um, Westwood closed in, like, the late 90s. I yeah. Think, I think it was a I think, or something. <laughs> I think they uh, raised the grounds, too. Yeah. It's a parking lot now. Yeah. The Westwood doesn't even exist. Oh, well, the sign's still there. Oh, is it still there? You said, well, like, <laughs> sometimes you see one that's driving by. Oh, okay, yeah. It. And it's a famous location yeah. that um, appears in, like, Resident Evil Nemesis to, like, blow it up. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and we make references to Nemesis a lot. The, the movie, the Albert Pune film, and the... Yeah, yeah, I know it's like Nemesis. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, anything else? Or? Yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> oh, they're still talking, so we can talk a little okay, bit more. Okay, I'll keep running, and you can just say whatever you want. Just talk whatever I want. Yeah, I really appreciate that review. That was awesome. That, yeah. I feel like the movie's kind of something that, like, if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. Mm-hmm. There's not too much, I don't know, middle ground? Yeah. Or, because, like I said, like we just tried to make it like as like gory and like yeah. fun as we could, even though we had no money. Because as long as it's energetic and it's fun, 
hopefully that way the people won't have problems with it. Yeah, it's kind of funny. Like I, I think for the first time, it's like the, 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 the um, mask guy reaches into the bag and you hear that kind of like saw blades. And yeah. Yeah. Wondering what that is, and then you later hear razor fur. <laughs> razor fur. <laughs> we were just making. We were just like. Um, I don't know where that came from. Where I thought that the bear could like chop someone up, and he. I do the thing in movies that I hate the most, where he says the powers he has. He says laser eyes, and if I was a viewer, I'd be like, "What are the laser eyes going to come in?" And it never really happens in the movie. That's all. Sorry if I rambled on a little bit. I have a tendency. <laughs> okay, well, I guess that'll be it. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Well, thank you very much. Well, I hope you enjoyed the interview. Um, in hindsight, it was probably better to release it as a podcast, since um, you can hear how the excitement in Justin DeClue's voice when he talks about the film. Um, he is um, currently at work on his second feature film entitled Impossible Horror, which um, has a um, Indiegogo campaign, which um, actually has um, Teddy Bomb as a perk, and it looks like you can probably still donate and get it, so I'm going to include the link to the campaign in the show notes. And uh, the clue is also the co-curator of the Laser Blast Film Society with um, Peter Kopowski, who curiously hasn't been wearing his hat lately. Laser Blast screens once a month at the Royal Cinema in Toronto. I'll put the uh, Facebook page in the show notes, and um I hope you enjoyed this um, first edition of Lost Interviews, uh, and I will see you later.